All right, this is Math 2, Unit 9, Lesson 4, looking at volumes of pyramids and cones today. Um, the basic concept here that we're looking at is once we determine what the base of a shape is going to be, we multiply that by the height that's given, and we end up because the pyramid dividing it in three, divided by three. So that's your essential formula that we'll be coming back to again and again. The only other concept that's a little different today is that every once in a while they're going to give us a slant height, and that's going to be like you'll see down here, number four, which we'll get to, which is not the height of the shape; it's the height of the of the distance along one of those faces, basically. And we'll have to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what the actual height is going to be. So again, today we're going to look at numbers one, two, four, um, six, seven, and then on the back side we'll look at numbers twelve and 16. We won't look at these guys here. These are some more composite ones like you had in your last lesson and that's just another one you have similar things to the front. So let's begin with number one and two just kind of briefly here to go over this. All right so with number one um, we use our formula one-third times the base. The area of the base, this is a square, is 15 by 15. So 15 times 15 times the overall height which is given here at 10, and I just simply multiply that out, and 1 third times 15 times 15 times 10 is 750 centimeters cubed. So it really is just as simple as that. Number two, we have another pyramid. It just happens to be kind of laying down, so you have to kind of visually see, oh, I've got to tilt it back over. We have a square base. It again tells you it's a square pyramid. So I have a square base, so my formula is still it's a pyramid. A third times, the base is 7 times 7 for the area of the base, times the height, and that's this line right here. It gives you a little 90 degree sign that tells you, oh, that's my height, times 6. So 1 third times 7 times 7 times 6 gives you 98 centimeters cubed for that one there. Okay, so those are the basics just using the formula there. Now let's look at number 4 because, again, it's a little more complicated. Um, it's not terribly bad. You just have to go, oh, I want to do something different. So in this case here, I don't know the actual height. So I can't just plug in the numbers and see, oh, what it comes out to be. I need to determine what the height is going to be. This slant value I'm going to use to find the height. And once I'm done with the, and I find the height, I won't use that number again. So to find that slant height, I'm going to go ahead and say, well, I know that this length, let's go and draw it for you, is 8. I'm trying to find out what this length is going to be, okay, right here. I don't know what that's going to be. This is my height, right? That's my height. And the bottom here is going to be the distance from here to about the midpoint of that square. Well, the midpoint is going to be half of whatever that value is. Well, half of 5 is 2.5. So now if I use my Pythagorean theorem, what I'm really looking at is 2.5 squared plus my height squared is going to be equal to my hypotenuse or my slant height, 8 squared. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the distance here of my little base, which is from the midpoint to the end, half of the length squared plus my height squared, which is what I'm trying to find out. I don't know what that's going to be yet. I don't have one here. Equals 8 squared. So 2.5 squared is 6.25 plus 8 squared equals 64. When I subtract 6.25 from both sides, I have 8 squared equals 57.75. If I take the square root of both sides to get the h by itself, h is going to be equal to 7.6. So now I have an actual height to work with, and I go back to the same formula I used above, which will be 1 third, sorry, <laughs> 1 third times the base, which is 5 times 5, 5 times 5, times the height, which I now know is 7.6. When I multiply all that together, 1 third times 5 times 5 times the height. This is my base here, my height here, right? 
that's going to be equal to 63 meters cubed. Okay, so one extra step using the Pythagorean theorem to find out what the missing height value was going to be. Let's look at a word problem just quickly while we're here. Looking at number six, it says the base of a pyramid is a square, 14 centimeters on a side. The height is 25. Find the volume. This is just a simple formula thing. One third times the base. The base value of the area of the base is 14 times 14, because it's a square, times the height, 25. And when you use a calculator, plug that in. You end up at 1,633 centimeters cubed. All right. Now I'm going to do the same kind of thing when I look at a, a cone. It's the same idea. I'm going to now have one third, and my base this time is the area of a circle. So it's one third pi r squared times my height, whatever it might be. And so as I plug my number values in here, I have one-third times the value of pi. R squared is four, parentheses here, 4.2 squared times my height, which is seven. All right? So when I multiply 4.2 squared times seven divided by three, I end up with 41.16 pi. The directions here say, to do it in terms of pi and also as a rounded number. So 41.16 pi, if I multiply that by 3.14, I could say it's also equal to 129 uh, feet cubed. All right, so you can leave it in terms of pi like it says to do, or you can multiply it out, and there you go. I prefer when it says leave it in terms of pi, it's just a little bit nicer. So same type of deal with the formula, one-third times the area of the base, which is a circle this time, times the height. Let's look at the back side together, looking at number 12. 12, we have a cone that's a little bit slanted. The thing that makes it still an, an easier one to solve is that even though it's slanted, they gave you the value of the actual height with this dotted line and the 90 degree angle. So it's not too bad. Um, what's interesting is that both the numbers I'm going to do here, my answer was one number off from the answer key. I'm not sure why. Uh, I know you're kind of rounding your work with pi, so maybe because I used too small a value of pi, I ended up going down. Um, I just put in 3.14. Perhaps if I press the pi button, it might go up one more, one more uh, number value. Not a big deal. All right, so here's my formula. I have one-third times, this is a circle on the bottom, pi times the radius squared times the height. And again, it's probably the big height the way to look at there. So let's plug stuff in. We have one-third times pi. My radius is here at 10 squared times my height, which is 12. So one-third times pi times 100 times 12, or one-third times pi times 1,200. I keep going. 1,200 divided by 3 is 400, so now I'm at 400 times pi, and 400 times pi is about 1,256 meters squared. Again, the answer key goes up to, um, I think, 57, one more than that, but again, I just went with 3.14 as my value. If you type in 3.14 for pi, that's what you come out with. All right, number 16, I want to do this one as well because, again, this 10 value is not a height. I do not have the height. So I need to find out my height in order to solve this one first, okay? So let's figure out the height there. The height is going to be um, 6 squared plus the height squared equal to the hypotenuse, cross from it, 10 squared. So I have 36 plus 8 squared equals, sorry, equals 100. And I subtract 36 from both sides. H squared equals 64. Square root of both means H equals 8. So my height happens to be 8. All right. You might have noticed that it basically is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, except everything is doubled. So if you caught that early, it saves you a whole bunch of steps, doesn't it? So it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle doubled up. Now I use my formula for 1 third times pi r squared times my height. And in this case here, 1 third times pi r is 6 
squared times the height we just found out was 8. And we're down to 1 third times pi times 36 times 8. And when you multiply all that out and multiply by pi, you end up with 301. I get about 301.4. The book, I think, says 302. You get the idea. 301, 302. And it doesn't tell us what they are, so it would be units cubed for the answer there. Again, the key is knowing it's a slant and looking at the Pythagorean theorem to find out what's your value of your actual height. All right, that's it for today. Hope that helps you some. Have a great day.